I'll call to order the uh, City Council meeting of uh, May 10th, Thursday, May 10th. It's uh, close to 7.30 p.m. Please rise for the invocation by Councilman Slaughter and remain standing for the flag salute. Lord, we thank you for bringing us here together again. Uh, we pray that you guide our thoughts and guide our decisions as we make for this city. We thank you for everything that you have placed upon us and blessed us with, and we pray that you watch over those in harm's way, both here and abroad, protecting the rights that uh, we appreciate here at home. Lord, we just pray that you guide us and keep us. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilman. Item three, uh, approval of city minutes. Dated 42618. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Questions, corrections, comments? Hearing none, uh, Mrs. Frank. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Noviello. Yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Slaughter. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Thank you. Uh, item four, limited courtesy of the floor. We have no request for that tonight. And no. item five. Excuse uh, me, we Mr. Allison. Uh, we do have a request oh, we do? for. Oh, yes. It okay. should be on your agenda. Uh, Bruce Huffman, you're looking at the. There's an, there's an add on. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. We do a. <laughs> we have a. Uh, Here, Randy. Bruce Huffman, Huffman for uh, limited courtesy of the floor first. Okay. Uh, Mr. Allison, members of council. Uh, I'm sorry, Chief Eckman. Somebody requested limited courtesy of the floor, so okay. he wants to address an agenda item before we get to it. So my mistake, sorry. Good evening, Mr. Allison, members of council, the administration. I would like to offer a few words about the beginnings of a 95-year-old Williamsport landmark before it passes into oblivion. At the southeast corner of West 4th and Elmira Streets stands the building originally known as the Young Men's Christian Association of Williamsport. This was the second edifice constructed for the YMCA. The first built at 211 West 4th Street was completed in 1888. It has since been demolished and is now the site of Woodlands Bank. The 343 West 4th Street structure was built on the old First Congregational Church property, which previously was the home of William G. Elliott, mayor from 1893 to 1896. That structure was originally built to be the home of William Armstrong, who ironically was the first president of the YMCA after its organization in 1866. When it was decided that a new YMCA would be erected, a community-wide fund, fund drive was undertaken in the fall of 1920. In less than a month's time, the goal of raising $450,000 was not only achieved, but was surpassed by more than $15,000. In the spring of 1921, the Philadelphia architectural firm of Thomas, Martin, and Kirkpatrick was engaged to complete the design. The general contract was let to the Turner Construction Company of Buffalo, New York in March of 1922. Excavation work commenced a few weeks later. The cornerstone was laid on Sunday, August 20th of the same year with a large crowd present. The three-foot-long, 15-inch-high limestone block was placed at the northwest corner of the building. Construction work continued in earnest through the fall, winter, and spring, and by the late summer of 1923, the four-story brick and concrete structure with 121 dormitory rooms was ready for occupancy. The new YMCA was formally dedicated debt-free 
on Sunday, September 9th, 1923. Henry D. Brown, chairman of the building committee, stated, we believe it to be the best planned, the most substantially built, and tastefully furnished of any YMCA building in the country. Lastly, in 1928, the YMCA was described in this way. Ever since it was opened, the building has proved its usefulness in the community, serving thousands of men and boys in different ways and giving to the association ample facilities for carrying out its program for the physical, moral, and spiritual betterment of those coming within the scope of its influence. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Huffman, for keeping uh, us well informed on our history. Um, now we're ready for uh, item five, introduction. Uh, two new hires for the Williamsport Bureau of Fire, Cameron Arthur and Brock Rupert. And I might add first that uh, uh, Dr. Williamson uh, is coming to the meeting tonight, but he'll be here a little bit late, and uh, Councilwoman Katz is unable to attend tonight. Okay, Mr. Allison, members of council, staff, and those in attendance, um, tonight I'm proud to announce the two newest firefighters to the range of the Williamsport Bureau of Fire. To my right is Brock Rupert. Uh, Brock's here tonight. He's accompanied with his mom and dad, Michelle and Mike, uh, his girlfriend, Christy, in the crowd, and a rather large contingency of family. <laughs> um, Brock was also, unfortunately, was had to deal with some family issues and was unable to attend his graduation which was what, about two Fridays ago, I do believe, sir. <laughs> so we made this for him. Well, I didn't get it for him. He earned this. This is his diploma from Hack, with his diploma as Firefighter 1 and 2 and everything else that goes along with it, which meets the criteria that we to a Bureau of Fire. We're proud of him. Mr. Brock, there you go, sir. <laughs> and along with that goes his badge. With our new uniforms, we can't really do a pinning because we got rid of the badge for daily use, so, but they'll go on as class A's. And to the right of Brock is Cam Arthur. Cam Arthur also is a uh, second generation firefighter of the city of Williamsport. His father currently is on the job, Todd Arthur, and his wife Sandy. We also grew up with them in Muncie, also friends and family. And in tents tonight is his wife. Where's she at? In the back, sitting here? Hi, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> Katie Arthur in the back. And again, Cam Arthur, Brock Rupert. Mayor? City Council members, gentlemen, congratulations. Welcome aboard. And if we could give a round of applause for family members, because these two gentlemen wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the support of their family. So let's give the family. Uh, anybody on council would like to uh, make some comments? Welcome, gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, we're we're Seriously? grateful for <laughs> for two new hires to the fire department, and um, it's not an easy job. It's not a safe job, but they do their best uh, to make it look easy but it's not and because they're professionals and we certainly do appreciate um, that we have a qualified professional paid fire department so um, let's move to item six appointments and reappointments uh, for the planning commission um, William Rashar of uh, reappointed to a term commencing 5 10 18 ending 21721 Cindy Eister um, reappointed to a term 51018 ending 4322 and Charles Plankenhorn reappointed to a term commencing 51018 and ending 21721 as well. Um, this was reviewed in finance. So Ms. Mealy. This was reviewed in finance and uh, following what we 
believe to be procedure now that we're relatively, relatively, relatively well established with this. Um, finance interviewed uh, the candidates actually as a group, all three of them, um, since we were fortunate enough to have three different members of the Planning Commission come before us simultaneously. Um, we did not take um, action to make a formal recommendation, um, but we, I, I believe, uh, can't quite speak for body, but it seemed as though we unanimously sent all three candidates forward to the full body of council, um, feeling as though they have um, a good grasp of the work that the Planning Commission does, um, although also a uh, remarkable gratitude for the professional members of the Planning Commission. <laughs> um, they, all of them mentioned how nice it was to have both an engineer and an architect, or I guess two architects, excuse me, on the Planning Commission, um, just because of their increased familiarity with some of the documentation that they review, um, as well, obviously, as, um, as um, Gary Narr, our zoning officer and, uh, and several members of the administration to, to help with some of the finer details. Um, uh, yeah, they, they, all, all three applicants said that they were obviously more than comfortable with the time commitment and familiar with what it was um, and very interested in continuing to serve. Um, and so I, I bring it to the full body of council and say that uh, were, were it me personally, I would recommend um, reappointing all three. Thank you. Uh, comments or questions from council members? We're grateful for their uh, willingness to serve. Um, can we do these three? Okay, we'll do it as one. Uh, Mrs. Frank. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Noviello. Yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Slaughter. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. <laughs> um, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Uh, I'm just going to say thank you for City Council for reappointing. Um, these three individuals, they have worked hard over the years. They are very, very enthusiastic. Yes. And I think we have a, a variety of personalities and professionalism mm -hmm. among these individuals. And I'm sure they're going to continue to do a great job. We had a good conversation with them. And um, they have a, a good grasp of, of the importance of the job that they do. So, And thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. OK, I'm going to move uh, item 13 up at this point, Certificate of Appropriateness, 341 Market Street, the Barham Market. Good evening, Mr. Allison and members of council. What we present to you tonight is a Certificate of Appropriateness from Jama Bar LLC, located at 341 Market Street. It is to locate two steel or two black steel gates. They will be affixed to the building. Uh, when, the, when the establishment is open, those doors will swing out and, if, and affix to the concrete itself, so they will be fastened. They will be required to meet permitting requirements as well as the code requirements for installation. Um, I do have a, a representative here. Because they are going to be in the right of way, there is an agreement that is, has been completed. We do have the documentation as far as showing that we are a um, liability protector on the, on the policy. It was reviewed by Mr. Lubin, and I can answer any questions at this time. Okay. Um, do we need a motion? On this? Yeah. Uh, is there a motion? So move. Second. A motion and a second. Uh, comments, questions from council members? Ms. Mealy? Um, so it, it, uh, it actually sounds like a good idea, but I take, I take it the, um, the bar has simply delineating the PLCB yeah, it, a covered it, it, area for and, its and patrons so that we won't have issues with alcohol in the street or further out into the sidewalk. Correct. Uh, which certainly seems desirable on our part. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and as far as your review, Mr. Nahr, um, I mean, I'm, the, the gates look like they'll be, uh, they'll be painted straight black, correct? Correct. And, um, and they'll be relatively sturdy so, and, and, um, and affixed, so we're not going to have any issues with people swinging. Yeah, that will um, be required. They, they will be affixed when they're closed as as well, I assume they'll be affixed to the building. Got it. Okay. They won't. They won't stay open on. They, a they won't. Basis. They won't at all in any way be swinging. Um, it just looks tempting. <laughs> so, um, okay, sounds good. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Um, I appreciate all the pictures and measurements. It gave a good mm -hmm. grasp of uh, how it's all going to fit together. So it really helped. Um, if not, then uh, Mrs. Frank, please. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Noviello. Yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Slaughter. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Nair. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, we're going to move uh, uh, 
Ms. Halliday's um, three items up. And we're going to start with um, item 11 and then do 9 and 10. Um, Mrs. Frank, on the, uh, on the resolution for item 11, please. Sorry for not giving you the heads up. That's okay. Resolution approving change order number one to the levy system pump station review and backup power costs between the city of Williamsport and Wood. No, I, I, I want to move 11 up <laughs> MOA between the city of Williamsport and Tom Keller. Followed by 9 and 10, Janice, I yeah. think you said. I'm sorry. This one? Resolution approving a memorandum of agreement between Keller Partners and Company and the City of Williamsport for the pursuit of federal funding objectives for Graphius Run. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second, sorry. Thanks. Ms. Good evening, Thank Council, you. Mayor, and City Administration. This resolution is to approve a memorandum of under understanding between the city and Keller and Partners and Company for the pursu pursuit of federal funding object objectives associated with Graphius Run. Keller Partners will plan and implement government relations strategies for efforts designed to accomplish the city's federal funding objectives and assisting the preparation of grant applications and supporting materials for the initiative. Keller and Partners also will arrange meetings with members of Congress, congressional staff, and federal agency decision makers to advance funding efforts, strategically market the city's need to the federal decision makers, and also serve as a liaison to federal agencies relevant to this project. This agreement is the amount of and not to exceed $5,000 per month for a one-year contract totaling $60,000 and starting May 15th of this year and ending of May 14th of 2019. This was reviewed by finance with a positive recommendation. Um, and I also have Tom Keller here himself as a representative. And uh, I believe the plan is moving forward um, for the face um, of this project. Chelsea Myers will be uh, handling the contract with Tom Keller. Okay, thank you. Um, this was reviewed in finance, Ms. Mueller. This was reviewed by finance. And um, uh, we had a number of discussions actually specifically relating to um, how the graphics, how the, how the funding for this item should appear within the budget, um, for one thing. And, and it was our recommendation that um, the funding, the, the, the $40,000 for this year and the $20,000 that's budgeted to come out of uh, 2019 mm -hmm. um, to be transferred into our uh, consulting slash contract line item um, just because we want it to be clear. I think this is a consulting service, not a, not a groundbreaking service. And I, and I think that it's important that the city keeps track of what we're paying for consulting versus what we're paying in, in, in other areas. Um, uh, and um, there was also a note that this is the... Mr. Keller will be, Mr. Keller and Associates, excuse me, will be seeking um, monies to follow up on the hopeful receipt of the $500,000 grant for design services at Graphius Run. However, if um, the city is not fortunate enough to receive that design services grant um, at the outset, Mr. Keller can also, of course, seek funds for us um, for, design, for design elsewhere. Um, that said, finance forwarded it to the full body of council with a positive recommendation. Um, it, uh, uh, I know that a number of us always have trouble justifying spending on um, consulting when we have so many physical needs within the city. Um, and this money, we never know if it will turn out anything or, or not. But I would say that um, Mr. Keller and Associates have had a proven track record um, both with the Water Authority and I, I believe so far successfully with the county um, and have, have proven to be a, um, a good company to, for the city to, uh, to engage with. Uh, that said, um, of course, I leave it to the full body of council to discuss the general merits of consulting or not. We forward it to the full body of council with a positive recommendation. Thank you. Um, questions from uh, council members or comments? Um, if there aren't any right off the bat, um, uh, I had a brief conversation with uh, Mr. Keller and um, talked about some of the nuts and bolts of. Uh, what this contract entails and uh, deliverables and those kinds of things. So uh, if you could give us a brief overview of that, I think. Absolutely, thank you, uh, Mr. Allison and Council. Um, uh, my firm in Washington 
and don't hold that against me, by the way. There's a lot of hot air there in Washington. But uh, what we do is we work with our clients to develop their funding needs. We identify um, grant resources. We help write those grant resources. And we submit them, uh, hopefully for a win. Uh, there's a lot of before work that we have to do uh, to prepare the people that we're sending these applications to, uh, such as providing them with an advance of a concept paper, for example, about what the project is, and getting their buy-in and also their comments. And uh, we find that that's a, a really important way to get a leg up. Uh, that is something that we did with uh, the authority uh, when we were able to write and, uh, and win the $2.7 million grant uh, for the West 4th and uh, Trenton Avenue. And uh, we also uh, did that with the uh, $729,000 grant that we won for Pine Street. Uh, and we worked with the city on that as well. So uh, our vision for working with uh, Graphius Run would be from the very beginning, start thinking of different phases where we could take pieces of the Graphius Run project and determine where we could get that federal funding. And uh, so we should start right away doing that. And there are people in Washington that have funds available to make that happen. And uh, we intend to make that happen. So uh, I appreciate your indulgence. Um, Mayor Campbell. Thank you. And this is for the public. Uh, I appreciate everybody, city council and the administration. We are very committed to solving the Graphius Run uh, issues that we have there uh, publicly. Uh, do you feel pretty confident that with the pots of money in Washington, D.C., that we can at least start the process? I do. For the general so. public, if you could address that, because I know that there's quite a few people in the East End that are, have been concerned about this issue for decades, and we are addressing it, and we want to fix this situation once and for all. There, there are diverse pots of money that we could go after to uh, try to address this. And as I said, it's very important that we look at it in phases. Um, but when you begin to look at the different uh, federal agencies, whether we're talking about FEMA, uh, in some cases USDA, because parts of the beginning of Graphius Run uh, starts up there, uh, we could look at um, the Appalachian Regional Commission, for example. Uh, we can be very creative about these different phases. The <coughs> Department of Transportation is another one for the, for the bridges, for example. And so I do think, Mayor, that um, uh, we would have a good start. You know, it's, everyone wants a grant in a year, and sometimes it's hard to get that. Uh, I think we've got a good track record with the authority. It took us 13 months to get $2.7 million. Um, but it does take time, but I, I can guarantee that we're going to be able to have a very good process in place and touch the right people and, uh, and target the right funding opportunities. Thank you. Mr. Henderson. Um, I wonder if I could ask Ms. Mealy a question. Uh, could you... Um, tell us exactly again where this is coming from in our budget. Sure, absolutely. I mean, so the city had a, um, a set aside, a kind of an escrow account for Graphius Run. And my understanding from Ms. Halliday, I can confirm that with, um, uh, with Mr. Pavlov right now, was that we had uh, funds remaining in that line item that we will be committing to the consulting firm. Um, and then the, uh, um, and then the, the 2019 amount will have to be budgeted as part of our contract services line item. So uh, that is to say, excuse me, I'm sorry, so $40,000 um, of Graphia's run funding and then $20,000 in 2019 in the contract services line item. So we will be budgeting. We have, Joe, no? Okay, talk, let's talk about the funding then. That was my understanding at the finance meeting. Okay. You want to know the balance? Yeah. Okay. So the city... Yeah, so you're saying that we set aside something for Graphius Run in last year's, I'm trying to recall, if we, set a, if we did a set aside for Graphius Run. Yeah. Um, uh, 
there were oh, no, I, I know that we set aside funding and that we had a contract with for two. What I'm asking is when this year's Act 13 funding comes in, I can't recall, did we commit part of it to Graphius Run last year? Yes. Okay. So depending on the Act 13 funding, which will arrive in July, it seems to me, July, August, that's when we'll find out exactly how much is in that line item. But again, keep in mind that if it's reduced, we've had to um, allocate money from that account to balance the budget. But anyway, the, the, the bottom line right now is about $24,000 without this year's allocation. Okay. And we budgeted forty-five thousand dollars this year once again. So. so even if we had to reduce the amount of funding for Graphius Run in this year's allocation, potentially we could even be looking at the full amount of funding coming from the Graphius Run set aside from Act 13 <coughs> if our Act 13 funding were to be what we anticipated. Right. Right. Um, however, there, if that helps me. Uh, it does. So you, you don't like gambling the same way I don't like gambling. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. um, you know, so we're, we're hoping, right? Yeah, I, I, um, I think it would be reasonable to assume that we should be able to find at least sixteen thousand dollars from our Act Thirteen funding for um, this for the forty thousand dollars we're committing for this year's contract. Um, if we were fortunate, we would of course be able to move the entirety of the Graphius Run budgeted funding from Act Thirteen into contract services, even to cover next year's amount. Right. Um, but. Uh, um, but the finance guys don't like don't like gambling either over there. I can see. Uh, okay. Any further questions? I might direct directly to them. Yeah. Only because. Uh, well, I figured you had uh, talked through that in finance and, and kind of worked through well, some we, of those details. We didn't have M Mr. Nichols was out as, as well as Mr. Pavlock, so okay. the discussion that we had was limited to um, the the engineering department. I was up inspecting gravels running. <laughs> <laughs> okay. By which he means swimming. <laughs> Uh, all right, so we have the 24. We're, we're hoping for 16 more from Act 13. Uh, and, uh, and that just gets us through this year. And then we budget the 20 for next year. <clears throat> and of course, this is month by month. Um, this is not up front. Um, this is 5,000 a month. Mm -hmm. So payments of 5,000, okay. Thank you. Um, question um, that I wanted to ask you was um, we, we've had some preliminary studies done of uh, possible solutions uh, with some price tags attached to them, um, but we're having like a major engineering study done. Um, how, does, how would that coordinate with, with your efforts or how would you coordinate with that? What, what kind of information do you need and uh, to proceed and uh, well it's it's helpful to have preliminary design for example or an idea of the preliminary construction mm -hmm. um, you know for the grant applications it's it's something that usually is required after uh, it's not something you have to have ready to go but mm -hmm. you know the the cost associated with some of these things could be used partially as a match mm -hmm. uh, to those, uh, you know, the, the um, match requirement on the applications. So it's good that you've done that, um, but it's not something that you necessarily have to have completed before you submit a grant application. Okay. Um. <laughs> so, uh, because it is a long process, um, and the beginning part is uh, working the room a little bit, I would imagine. <laughs> In some ways, yeah. yeah. I mean, what we want to do is, for example, we would begin, I would come up here with my team, mm -hmm. and we would have a drop-dead understanding of Graphius Run, some of the issues, the money that has been spent, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, what is the economic impact uh, to Graphius Run, and positioning that project in a way that is uh, compelling to the various uh, executive agencies. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that we would want to do. You know, everything is an economic uh, project. Mm -hmm. And so you, we, we need to make sure that Graphius Run uh, can be sold in that way. And we can do that, particularly if we uh, take it in phases. Mm -hmm. um, 
So we would get a strong understanding of, of that, and then we would put together a strategy plan based on our discussions here, mm -hmm. and we'd like to take the full day probably to do that. Um, and we'd send that strategy, discuss, uh, strategy memo uh, back to you all and get your comments, make sure that it's approved by everybody, and then we would implement that. And uh, part of that strategy would not only be um, pursuing these particular funding targets that we have, but also uh, working with the congressional delegation, uh, which is very important because every grant is a it's part of a political process, and uh, that will be important to do that. And uh, it's not only working with the congressional delegation, but it's also working with those program officers in the Washington offices, whether it's FEMA or it's you know EPA or uh, the Department of Commerce or what have you. We would want to sit down with the decision makers that take that application and uh, put that over to the reviewers. Um, and, you know, that is getting a big leg up over the competition. Mm -hmm. um, so that's part of it. And then, you know, once that is, that application is submitted, and, and by the way, we're not just talking about one application. We would like to, you know, we want to increase the chances for success. So if we're going after several funding streams, that's good for me. That's good for you all. And uh, um, it gives also members of Congress a little variety in what they can support. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's kind of how we would uh, approach it at mm -hmm. this stage. And one other uh, important thing that we talked about um, is the uh, interconnection of your working with the county uh, on the levy, um, and you've worked with the authority and, and are able to do things with them. and. Um, but what you would do with us, uh, there would be no uh, competing, conflicting interests on uh, any of these grants. Um, Correct. For the different bodies. Before we were approached, I mean, after we were approached, um, we looked at that because mm -hmm. we could not work on this project if there were conflicts. Um, the good news is the levy is a very complex and difficult project uh, in some ways. and. You know, we are limited in the types of funding that we can get for the levy. That's through the Army Corps um, and through congressional authorizations, which we're doing that simultaneously. Um, with a project like Graphius Run, um, the types of funding we would be going after would have no conflict with the levy or with what the priorities of the authority mm -hmm. uh, are at this stage. And so as we work through, for example, um, with the authority, the Youngman and the Heller Dam, um, those would not have any conflict whatsoever with either <coughs> of these projects. Mm -hmm. They're different pots of money. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Nickel. Uh, again, I was not able to make the Finance Committee meeting, and since I was not able to review this agreement. Uh, I was not given the opportunity to review it <clears throat> prior to its distribution. The only comment that I was going to offer at the um, uh, Finance Committee was that typically when you have contracts like service agreements such as this where there's no performance uh, standards or no specific requirements for due dates or communication or meetings or things like that, we always have a 30-day out clause in our consulting contracts. That's in the Penn Strategies contracts and the Delta contract, and I don't see it in this particular contract that mm -hmm. there's not a 30-day out clause. And that's typically required, you know, um, depending on the funding source that, that, that uh, provides uh, the funds for this particular agreement. Now, Act 13, I don't think would require something like that. But in general, if you have a service agreement that has nothing that, no requirements, of any kind other than a best effort, um, typically we add that in, into the contract. And that's up to, you know, council if they want to consider that. I think that's a reasonable question. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, and that perhaps uh, follows up a little bit on, on a line of questioning that I had for you, Mr. Keller, now that you're here at the council meeting. Mm -hmm. um, which related to, uh, Ms. Halliday, when do we hear about the original $5,000 um, 
grant that we five five hundred five hundred thousand dollar grant that we had applied for um, a couple of months ago. That submission will be at the end of this month, and I believe uh, face, Jason Fitzgerald had said we would might find out by July. Um, okay. He was supposed to be present this evening to actually speak on that, um, but I can definitely get back to you and let you know on that. Okay. Because um, I, I guess uh, um, the one question I would have is if, if we initiate, but it sort of follows in with Mr. Nichols' question, if we initiate um, a contract with Mr. Keller now, and don't even know if we'll have the funding for the engineering portion of the study for another three months, then um, we, can, we can begin making connections, we can begin seeking funding, but I'm assuming once we get the funding for the engineering portion of the study, we will need to um, issue an RFP, choose an engineer, and have them begin their correct. service, correct? Um, and we would anticipate probably at least four to five months, I would assume, for deliverables on that. That is correct, but if it um, within Tom Keller's contract, it's not only just for construction costs; it's also for design. So, if we were not to receive mm -hmm. that five hundred thousand dollar grant, those would be pots of funding that Tom Keller would also be looking for as well at the federal level. Um, I think the thought is, as Tom Keller had uh, uh, said, uh, you know, the the money always doesn't come within a year; um, it right. takes time. And right. um, with these governmental agencies putting the word out there, getting our name. Um, um, to, you know, on Capitol Hill um, and, and spreading the word about Williamsport is kind of the first steps. Um, right. So it could be considerable that, yes, would these align perfectly? Mm -hmm. That would be the ideal, and that is what the situation, what I am anticipating. Mm -hmm. um, if it does not, we, we can be searching for more design costs. I, I guess my, my only concern becomes if we look at hearing about that grant in July of 2018, and, and what we've seen, at least with the levy, is that we need some pretty intense cost estimates before we move forward looking for money with the levy. Um, so if we're not set up to have the cost estimates related to Graphius Run until the beginning, until, say, April of next year, which is about what I'm hearing from you timeline-wise, um, then it seems as though, uh, I'm, I'm not saying that we would only eventually have a one-year contract with, um, with Mr. Kettler. It might well be that we would extend it if we were seeing some return. But I'm saying within the year, it seems that we could kind of wind up hanging. Do you understand what I'm saying? It could we, be a potential, yes. Right. Um, um, so I guess what I'm asking is, are we wise to perhaps delay this contract for a couple of months until, not because I don't think that Mr. Ke Mr. Keller could be of service, but because I feel as though we might have, uh, it might gel slightly better with the projections we're already looking at if we move on this a couple of months from now instead of right now and bring it more in line with knowing if, we're, knowing if we've gotten this original pot of funding or if that's part of what he's doing. Um, and because obviously it only does so much good to go to DC and start asking about money for construction costs when we then turn around and say, oh, we don't have any money for engineering. <laughs> so um, you gotta go back and find that first. Um, so, uh, um, and, and then we can return to the question of the of the 30 day thing. But I think that part of what I'm asking is, are, are we wise to start it a little further out because that will give um, Mr. Keller more opportunities for deliverables than um, than starting it immediately. Um, and uh, and um, and then in that case, Mr. Keller, the follow up question is, um, can we make some sort of arrangement as Mr. Nichols suggested? Uh, we we do indeed have 30 day out. Um, agreements with our other uh, consultants, and um, and we, as as a rule, we have Delta does what quarterly reporting, um, and uh, and I believe we get uh, monthly reports from Penn Strategies, but very little sort of in-person reporting. Um, so, is there any way that we could arrange for um, a potential 30-day out or a 30-day pause if the, if it looks like we need to? Um, wait a while to better utilize your services, and is there any way that we could arrange for some level of reporting, not in person, because you come from a lot further away than, than, uh, than Penn Strategies, but, uh, but at least an email sort of thing where, where we can all be aware of what's going on. Mm -hmm. If I may, on the, uh -huh. do you wanna? Okay. Uh, on the um, when to start the contract, it's totally up to, to you, of course. Um, it depends on how serious you are about Graphius Run and addressing it. Mm -hmm. And I would only say that because it takes time mm -hmm. to identify the grants and to begin laying the groundwork. 
So whenever you want to start that process, you know, it sets you, it sets you back. By a couple of months. But, exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's completely um, up to you. My advice would be, you know, we're, we're in May, um, is to begin as soon as you can, because what happens is people begin to turn their, their brains off uh, when we become a, come into election time, um, at least on Capitol Hill. But back here at home, they're running for, you know, uh, re-election. So we're going to want to be able to leverage uh, some of that for the projects. And I'm talking about the federal level, uh, mostly. But, um, and then in terms of the, uh, the out, uh, we usually don't do a 30-day out. We usually do a 90-day out uh, if that's something you, you want to do. Uh, the reason why not 30 days is because if we're working on a grant and the client decides, well, we're going to stop this, and we've, we've been laying, you know, the political capital out there on, uh, in Washington, you know, that's kind of our reputation on the line as well. And uh, after 30 days, it doesn't look good when, you, when you're no longer working with that particular client. Um, it's not smart for either party in that situation. But 90 days gives you enough time where um, if there is an issue or maybe you want to take a pause, uh, you know, we, could, we can get a lot done in that 90-day in that period, three-month period. So. Then I would open that up for discussion to the rest of council. Um, yeah. Mr. Henderson. Well, it seems to me that a 90-day that uh, would be good. Um, I'd like to see that before we go any further, at least that. Um, uh, one question, did, did our solicitor look at this? Okay. So we haven't, we haven't, you haven't seen this at all yet. Okay. Anybody know? Was it reviewed by either of the solicitors? I'm sorry, it was not reviewed by the solicitors, and that is completely my fault. Um, I missed, I, I completely missed that with this contract. Um, I'm sorry, with, with all the, uh, the chaos going on with the last week and a half, um, I did not send that to mm -hmm. Norm, no. If I may? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, since it's the case that our solicitor did not see this, uh, I believe that it would be in our best situation for the city if we took a pause for maybe two weeks. Our solicitors take a look at it, and I'm just saying two weeks. I don't believe that we should put this on hiatus whatsoever. East End people have waited for decades for the city to get moving. We've made a little bit of movement, but I think it is time for us to move forward. It is an election year. We see this at there's quite a few individuals that are running for Congress, and I think this is the time to get moving because it will get their attention to try to, to funnel some monies back to our city. Uh, so personally, I think we take that two weeks. Of course, you don't have to come back here because of the distance. I think we've already asked you quite a few questions, but I think in two weeks from now, after our solicitors take a look at it, I would prefer if we move forward with this, and I believe the EastEnders uh, deserve that, and this will give you an opportunity to try to find some funding during this election season. Thank you. Thank you. Um, would you have a problem with that, uh, Mr. Keller? If we, I, I would have no problem with that. As I said, it's, it's totally up to you right. all. Right. Um, you know, it increases our chances for success. The sooner, the better. Right. Uh, but uh, you know, yeah. How, however, you want to proceed, it's fine with me. Okay. Um, uh. It's. It seems to me that at least pending solicitors' review and and the yes. addition of the 90 day out to the contract, um, that we should table this item currently and yeah. expect to see it back again in two weeks. Nice second. Um, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I would in, I would encourage the administration in the meantime um, just to continue thinking. I, I'm more than willing to consider that we should move ahead with the contract now. I would also be willing to consider that we should wait a month or two um, and just just to start ourselves off a month later and get a little more out of this this first year of consulting, perhaps in terms of when we when we start our um, 
our engineering elements. Mm -hmm. But um, but I will uh, leave that up to the to the administration, of course, to decide in the intervening two weeks as well. Um, and uh, and that said, I will make a formal motion to table this item until. Um, uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, there's no discussion for uh, tabling, so. Mrs. Frank on the motion to table. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Noviello. Yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Slaughter. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Um, thank you, Mr. Pillar, and uh, we'll be in touch. Mr. Keller, it, it's nice to meet the famed Tom Keller. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> We've been hearing about you for months now. It's nice to meet the uh, famed Thomas Keller. <laughs> okay, um, item nine then, uh, Mrs. Frank, in short form. Resolution approving change order number two to the master service agreement between the city of Williamsport and Wood. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Um, Ms. Halliday. Hello, yes. Uh, this resolution is to approve the change order number two to the master service agreement between the city and Wood. This change order includes three pertinent tasks to the system-wide improvement framework plan. The tasks include operation maintenance deficiency costing, letter of intent and extension request submission to the Army Corps of Engineers, and the, and the SWIFT plan budget and schedule stakeholder commitment meetings. The SWIFT plan requires deficiencies to be present rep Sorry, presented with a timeline and budget to completion based on priority with funding sources identified and a commitment from the local sponsor, which is the city, uh, to manage deficiencies identified by the Army Corps. Based on the current timeline to issue the final 2017 periodic inspection report from the Army Corps, uh, and since items additional to the 2018 inspection uh, have been identified as receiving the unacceptable rating by the Corps in the 2017 draft document, um, engineers requested, uh, sorry, the city um, uh, was contacted by the Army Corps and it was requested to submit a letter of intent um, extension for the final SWIFT plan. Uh, this change order is in the amount of and not to exceed $67,950. Uh, this was reviewed by Public Works with a positive recommendation and I also have uh, Gazel Mutlug from Wood here uh, uh, for a representative. Okay, thank you, Ms. Halliday. Um, public Works. Um, uh, we did have this before, so on Tuesday passed, and uh, you know this, uh, as the one coming afterwards, is uh, another sort of incremental step in this overall process that we've been contending with for some time here now. Uh, the extension letter, I think, is uh, uh, coming from the core itself. Uh, gives us a little bit of breathing room, I think, if I'm, if I'm interpreting that correctly, at least anyhow. Uh, however, it doesn't necessarily affect the amount that we're ex expressing here. And, uh, obviously, $67,950, no small amount, but uh, it seems that uh, uh, this is a sort of course of action that we are almost compelled to subscribe to. Um, I don't know whether or not uh, this all comes out in the final wash of things, but uh, I do know that uh, uh, the SWIFT plan is something we need to be mindful of. Uh, we have to be as, as up to speed with it as we can. Mm -hmm. We have to be as current with it as we can. And it will play a major role in the, the decision-making process as all this comes out in the final outcome. So uh, we did, uh, under uh, no particular duress, but nevertheless some duress, pass us with a positive recommendation to council. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Noviola. Uh, questions from council members? Ms. Ms. Mealy. Well, first off, the obvious one. Um, what, what is the source of the $67,000? Uh, we have fun levying funds set aside for um, a, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, we had the $500,000 from uh, the bank funding. We had $450,000 um, remaining. We had one um, uh, contract with Wood, and I believe that was in the amount of uh, 30000 roughly. Um, so that is where this line item is to come from. Okay, so we dropped it to four hundred and fifty. dollars um, Then we had a thirty k that it was, I think, 27 odd for the mm -hmm. um, original yeah, yep. pump station review and backup power costs, yes. correct? 
Um, and then now this will be another 68 effectively um, out of that remaining 450 in the bank funding. Got it. Um, and uh, help me to understand this is sort of the next step in the SWIFT plan, I'm assuming, that is to say after following the backup power review? Okay. Okay. Good evening, Council. Hi. Uh, so the backup power um, review that we did was really to help the city pursue funding opportunities, but it wasn't necessarily a requirement of the SWIFT plan. This particular um, proposal resolution mm -hmm. is because the core recommended that the city pursue an extension in order to accommodate the additional items that were found to be deficient since the 2010 inspection report. And since that report for 2017 wasn't complete when Ms. Halliday and the Corps spoke, they, they recommended to request an extension. And with that, um, they've never had an extension. They've never accepted a SWIFT plan or a SWIFT extension. So that's where these meetings come into play so that we can try to scope that and get them to actually accept what we submit since we have no basis to, um, to work from. And so this does help us move forward and, um, and to actually request that extension from the core and then to utilize the 2017 final report once it finally comes out mm -hmm. to do the costing for the SWIFT plan and submit based on that. And we intend in the extension request to make it clear that that's the inspection report that we intend to utilize for the costing and that we don't intend to continue to wait as we're working for additional inspection reports to come out and additional items. That's what we want to use and to submit with and so that there's a clear understanding of our basis as well as what they would request from us. So basically you're going to say, Last, you're going to call last call on That's what complaints we want about to the levy is what we're going to okay. That's what we're hoping that they would accept from us with this. And by having those conversations with them up front mm -hmm. and explaining to them what our goal is, we hope that they would accept that as the approach. And that's where um, submitting a strategy that the city would approve and then utilizing that to submit the extension request is, is scoped. Got it. Um, and so you'll forgive me for being blunt and this is not directed at you, That's but fine. we are effectively paying you $67,000 because the Army Corps doesn't know how to accept an extension request yet? I um, think it's, <laughs> I mean, no, not, 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 that, not that all of the money is going toward that, but you see what I mean. Like, it's a process that's never been gone through, so we have to pay. So we're the, we're the first, we're forging there. <laughs> well, um, I would caveat by saying that a portion of the 67,950 is for costing and not for the letter of um, intent extension request. And that's something that we would have to do whether it was extended or not. Um, however, I guess it's because no one has done the extension request that we need to have those conversations. And so, yes, the core doesn't know, but also then we don't know. And we just want to make sure that what's submitted gets accepted. And so that someone, although we may have a contact at the core who says that may be okay initially, unless we can get them to buy into the strategy and provide that either in writing or in mm -hmm. some formal way, um, then we would feel assured that what we submit would be would be worthwhile. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I think I'll, I'll, I'll yield to, uh, I'm just still digesting. <laughs> I know. But, but yeah, no, that, that, it's fine. I'm just, this is, it's interesting. Um, this is not an area that I wanted to be first in. Um, <laughs> um, Understandable. So, yeah. Other, Mr. Novio? Uh, we mentioned, I think, at that meeting a little bit, uh, and I think you just touched upon it lightly here. Uh, we're, we're waiting for some remaining documents to be presented, correct? That's and, correct. And as well as the final draft, is that in, involved in those other documents or is that separate from what you're looking for now? That, um, th that is the final document we're looking for, the 2017 final periodic inspection of the Williamsport levy system. It is their five-year inspection. It's the most encompassing, and the last one that we have is dated 2010. And so it's been quite a while, and the draft that they provided to us already includes additional items um, from the 2010. And then also it was um, in conversation that they expect additional items to the draft that we have seen. So we already know that they're giving us fair warning that there will be more to handle than there was in the 2010 final report. Now we, we're, 
waiting for this to come. Do you have any idea of a timeline with respect to the extension that we've requested? I'll let Ms. Halliday answer that with her communication. They have not given us a specific date, but they were hoping within a couple months. Um, I really would hope that <laughs> uh, it would be by November, but as I said, they, not, they did not give a specific date as to when they would have the final draft to us. And when that does come to us, that'll be something we will uh, uh, make sure that Keller is aware of as well? Yes, yes. And he was uh, given the, the, the draft we received um, a month, or well, two months ago, yes. Thank you. Mr. Slaughter. Can you, what was the reason for the extension again? I'm sorry, I'm just trying to. Um, I believe when Ms. Halliday was speaking with the Corps, they, um, they mentioned that the final periodic inspection hasn't been released yet and that there are additional deficiencies from the draft that they provided us. And we already identified from the draft that they provided us that there were additional deficiencies from the 2010 final that we had been working on with the SWIFT. So I believe we received the draft in the first week of March. And before then, we had been working off of the 2010 final periodic inspection report. So since March, the Corps has let us know that there are significant deficiencies in addition to what we had been reviewing and costing and writing the SWIFT plan around. And as a result of that, the Corps recommended to the city to pursue an extension such that the SWIFT can include all of these items and to move forward with the latest periodic inspection report. And also part of the SWIFT plan, the funding sources must be identified for the deficiencies. Um, so this buys us time uh, with, with all the efforts that we're putting forth with the county and Loyal Sock and South Williamsport um, and, and all the efforts that Tom Keller has been putting forth um, in Washington, D.C. So hopefully the, uh, the, it will be simultaneous that we will be able to finalize the SWIFT plan as well as receive funding at that point. And I just wanted to add, we can also identify funding sources that we are actively pursuing in the SWIFT plan, um, but we do need to have some definitive language about the, the plan to fund the, the repairs and rehabilitation, as well as the schedule. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Oh, is, is there any um, possibility that um, three months from now they could say, oh, we found more? And well, you have to start over, that kind of thing. Well, they will issue their final 2017 periodic inspection report, and they won't be doing another one for another five years. So our intent when we present our strategy for this extension request is to let them know that we are working off of that latest 2017 mm -hmm. which um, final inspection report, which we anticipate hopefully this summer, maybe by this fall, and that that's what we want to submit the SWIFT on. And that inspection was completed last year, and so that's already seven years newer than the latest. So I think that's a safe baseline to move forward with, and I think that's why the Corps recommended the extension to incorporate that data, mm -hmm. and hopefully they will accept that to be our, um, our last call, as Ms. Neely said. Mm -hmm. Um, Go ahead. Well, if, did we know that we won't have to work off of the 2017, the final report? I'm just wondering why we didn't wait to begin with for the final inspection report. We didn't know that we'd be receiving the draft in March, and we didn't necessarily know when the final would be coming. This was just recent conversation, and I'll let Ms. Halliday pick that up. Uh, yes, so last year, the uh, 2017, in, in June, uh, the five-year inspection was completed. It was a th three-day process from a third party by the Army Corps. Um, and for a few months, I had asked and requested to receive a draft form knowing that there would be potential um, deficiencies in addition to the ones that we had already had knowledge of. Um, and, and unfortunately, with the Army Corps' time frame and the way government works, we were not um, able to receive it until March. So it was completed in June, but we just got it in March. Correct. I got you. Um, and so moving forward with your departure, will this affect any of this, what's happening right now? 
So uh, moving forward, um, and uh, Bonnie Katz had asked this question on, uh, on Tuesday, and um, my soon-to-be boss, Wendy Walter, uh, from the Water Authority commented on it. Um, she sees it as part of my position at the Water and Sanitary Authority as to act as a liaison until your uh, new engineer is up to speed um, with all the current projects. And I believe the, uh, the, the the plan is moving forward that uh, Chelsea Myers will work um, in conjunction with Wood and Tom Keller and uh, Fran, McJumpin, Fran McJunkin from the county on the levy project. And then the final question that I have is just that, I think it's just a follow up, I think to what Ms. Muley was saying with regards to the meetings. It looks at approximate, uh, approximately maybe like $45,000 just for meetings. That seems a little significant. Well, the time includes the meetings themselves, but it also includes disseminating the conversations and the information and creating those meeting minutes as a record, as well as preparing for the meetings and then taking actions from the meetings themselves. So we anticipate action items from these meetings, including the extension letter itself, including um, coordinating with the local community. For example, we've been talking to um, to other local communities to see if, yeah, with Fran McJunkin at the county to see how we can make this a regional effort and to take credit for that, um, that level of effort within the SWIFT plan as it is a requirement. So although it seems like we're we're costing just the meeting itself because that's how it's written. It's really for the, the for work and also the, the after work of the meeting in order to generate those action items and, and create the path forward with the core. Submit your letter of, ex of intent extension request and then also to have that cost and, and really um, capture the remaining items as we see based on the, all the information we have and what we're anticipating that would be included in the SWIFT plan. That was the goal of this proposal, this resolution, to get us to that point where, where we can say that we have gathered everything based on the current requirements and, and requests from the Corps so that we can submit that SWIFT plan with any unforeseen changes from the Corps. That being said, um, that would be separate, but based on what we know now, I think this would get us to completion so that we can submit the, the letter of extension and also then submit the SWIFT. And is there an hour estimate or do you go by, what's the time frame would you think for this? If I missed that, I apologize. You mean for, the, um, for like this, this to be over in general? Right. So the timing that we put on this was the end of our MSA. And the reason for that is because we have no idea what the core is doing in terms of timing. So. We, um, we intend to work as soon as we have information from the Corps, and we've already begun to coordinate some of these meetings and these conversations. So our plan is to move forward as best we can, and then as any gaps may be pending from the Corps, we would then address that as they come in and try to get it done as, as efficiently as possible. Okay, yeah, it was just, yeah, I don't know. I was thinking 45,000 in my head for meetings to see what you actually like a happened. breakdown, a budget yeah. breakdown? Right. I do, ha I, that's what I use to generate the cost. So the hours represent the, um, us being present, but then also teleconferences and um, the documentation, the meeting minutes, the, strate the strategy submission that we intend to give to the city for how we intend to request that extension from the core, and then getting your buy-in and your comments, addressing those before submitting to the core. So there are some intermediate steps in between the meetings and in between submissions that are accounted for in that cost. Thank you. Sure. Um, other questions? Um, I have one uh, for finance. Mm -hmm. No, finance. Oh, really? no. I was like, Not Randy, finance, don't you start. <laughs> <laughs> we sat in that meeting together. <laughs> That's okay. Um, this this 67,000, um, has that been, have you crunched those numbers and 
Okay. Um, so this is a, a brand new impact we haven't considered yet. The impact, fee, there's, no, there's no money for that. I mean, no, I, no, this is a brand new impact on the budget. That we oh, have. well, that would, I, I guess the suggest would be coming out of the bond money. Yes, it's, it's part of the $500,000 that we that initially was line of credit borrowing. Yeah. And the that, that, that's what we just heard from the What's that? Five, out of the, the 500000 or whatever. Right. Okay. That, we, that we borrowed to deal with the levy, right? Um, I mean, well, again, I, well, I just remind you the only stipulation is that council wanted to see that money as match money. So it's not really matching anything, but. But it sounds as though this actually probably is matching or, yeah. or would count as match money. The one question might be um, the next item on the agenda as well as the 27000 for the um, initial pump station review and backup power costs. Does that count as match money? If I, if I may answer that, based on our discussion with the Corps last year, we had a, um, a SWIFT meeting here in this room. They did indicate that meetings, as well as the time that is committed for those meetings, does count towards match, and that can be calculated, for example, from city members for a, um, a specified wage for that type of a average position wage for that hour and they don't count our actual wage do they because then it's just not even worth keeping track no <laughs> <laughs> they did say that it can be like a industry standard wage for <laughs> for that um for that in involvement in those meetings so meetings would count and engineering studies would count so really anything that works towards the development including that um, coordination and correspondence would count towards match so, so what I'm hearing is that in addition to the fact that obviously these items count toward match, any expenditures with wood so thus far count as a match against for, for final levy right. spending and grants, um, we should be in some way or another keeping track within the city of the time that elected officials and city employees put into working on levy items. Um, have we been doing that at all? All right, somebody want to raise their hand and start? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but because it seems like that if that if that actually is a viable option then mm -hmm. and we may if we're looking at 10 million dollars in expenditures at some point on the levy or 20 million then we're going to need all the match we can get um, it would be wise for us to start keeping track of uh, so per our meeting our meetings we had uh, wood draws or uh, sorry writes up meeting minutes that also has all the people associated with that the time right. um, I do have uh, my calendar which shows all the meetings that I have attended in the past year um, and that also includes the time spent in Washington DC um, the only time that I have not logged um, is the after hours that are not between the nine and five other than when I've traveled to DC so those are the only things that I have not logged personally um, I know within the meeting minutes we have um, like I had said um, all the, the the people associated in their time um, I will have to speak with the county and see if they have been logging it but um, that is a really great question to ask for Fran McJunkin because I would assume uh, per our meeting over a year ago that she probably has been as well Got it. I'm just thinking that we've been working on this for 10 years, and yeah. we probably have not kept track of all that. We, might match right. <laughs> we could match 40 million at this point. <laughs> but uh, um, any, anyway, to moving forward, it certainly seems as though if we can if we can use that as a match, we we, we mm -hmm. should be. Um, these are the other funding questions for both the finance department and the finance committee. It strikes me that we haven't. Not that we've by any stretch been playing fast and loose with the funding that we do have for the levy, but that we need so much funding for the levy that perhaps there's not exactly a sense of balancing this against any future expenditures. Um, it's hard to get that sense when you're looking at a potential $20 million tab at some point in the future. And when we know that we've already spent, I, I think, close to half a million dollars mm -hmm. between um, what we're committing to this evening and what we've previously put into, yeah, over a million, never mind, sorry, yeah. Um, Anyway, uh, it's mind-boggling, I think, yeah. even for those of us used to dealing with 20, 20 odd million dollar budgets on an annual basis, um, this level of expenditure. If, if I may touch on that, it is, it is mind-boggling. I agree with you there. Um, but this is something that we have to finish. Um, we have uh, 
right now the letter of intent submitted, which allows us to be covered by the Army Corps insurance if we are to have a levy breach. Um, if we don't submit the SWIFT plan on time, um, we will be in in compliance with the Army Corps, and we would have to meet current day standards to become compliant once again. And it could be estimated to 300 million roughly just to get up to those current day standards. So I know it seems like it's a lot right now, but in the long run, it's a lot better than what it could be if we were not to stay in compliance. My question was answered, thank you. Anyone else? Actually, I guess Anyone? just one follow-up question that occurs to me then. Uh, the one thing that I'm always wondering is, if, if we're further along this process than anybody else is, um, where is that gonna leave all those people who aren't as far along as we are? Do you wanna answer that? I don't know if I can answer that question. Well, I can try to answer that. Um, you mean the other communities that are in I mean, I'm, I'm non-compliance? I, I don't know exactly how many communities are in non-compliance in the state of Pennsylvania, but I'm assuming it's a relatively mammoth There's number. There's about 16. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we are tracking them, and we'd like to reach out to them. Um, we haven't really developed a plan to do that, but we've been talking about that. And really the plan comes down to using what the city here has been doing as a template. So trying to encourage them to incorporate funding mechanisms or funding pursuit mechanisms, as well as then having engineering studies and support to then submit a SWIFT plan. At this time, we're not working with any other communities, and I'm not aware of any other communities that are completing a SWIFT plan, but there are also no other communities that have such a robust levy system as Williamsport in the state. And so this is a high priority in terms of how much it protects in addition to its size. Um, and I think that's why it's a bit of a trailblazer, if you will. Okay. So you're saying that the failure of the, the failure of our levy to be compliant would be a much larger failure than the failure of any of the other 16 systems that are currently out of compliance. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. The impact would be much greater. Okay. Thank you. Good question. Um, any others? I just have oh, one more. Mr. Sloan. Did, so did we determine a way to log and track our time on this then for the match? Or are we just going to um, keep moving? Derek, that sounds like that'll be on the finance agenda for the 24th of May. <laughs> yeah. Janice, would you, would you put that on there, please? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Unless somebody else wants to put it on their agenda. <laughs> okay. Crunch those numbers. <laughs> yeah. All right, then. Oh, Mr. Henderson. Uh, yeah, thank you. Just, just to clarify, then, uh, moving forward, um, and, and perhaps the mayor can speak to this, uh, it will be our city planner that will take the lead in this project moving forward here, just so we know. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Although, um, I think Ms. Halliday referenced that she's still going to be involved uh, through the water. Correct. We just, it'd be good to know, yeah. you know, where, because the buck's got to stop somewhere. Yeah. So, uh, thank you. Mr. Stein. And so, that will be for the entire interim then, that Ms. Halliday will work with, with Ms. Myers then? Because it just seems, I mean, she's not an engineer. I just want to make sure that if we're making decisions, uh, that the engineer has reviewed these or. I would suggest I mean, we're trying to administrate what they're going to do, and I think right. um, the administration will. We will keep you, we will keep you abreast of the whole process. Right, and have a plan for them to work together and and report to somebody in the administration. So there's lots of communication going on. Thank you. If I may touch upon that. Wood is committed to keeping council and the city informed. Mm -hmm. I know that when I spoke with um, Councilwoman Katz yes, uh, the other day, she asked to be kept in the loop, and we fully understand that during this transition, you might 
be concerned. And mm -hmm. so I, I want you to know that from our end, we are committed to making sure that you guys are kept up to Thank speed you. and informed and so that the city can move forward appropriately and not feel like you're in the dark. <laughs> right, I appreciate that. Sure. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Mrs. Frank then on the resolution. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Nubiello. Yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Slaughter. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Dr. Williamson. Yes. And the resolution passes. Um, item 10. Mrs. Resolution Frank. approving change order number one to the levy system pump station review and backup power costs between the city of Williamsport and Wood. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Thank you. Um, Ms. Halliday. Thank you. This resolution is to approve change order number one to the levy system pump station review and backup power up backup power cost, resolution number 8747. Um, as part of the backup power and pump station review contract with Wood, the city administration had requested additional information to support the submittal uh, for the March meeting with the city's federal lobbyist, Tom Keller, and the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, however, two days before the final uh, memo submission was required to the city, um, which proposed the funding sources for the identified deficiencies to the levy system. Uh, the city administration, we received uh, the pertinent information from the, from the five-year inspection re report um, from the Army Corps. Um, this change order re requests, uh, represents, sorry, the level of effort that was beyond Wood's original scope and budget in the amount of a not to exceed $4,750. Uh, this was reviewed by Public Works with a positive recommendation. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Noviello. Uh, yeah, this was a, another sort of incremental step in the furthering of the SWIFT plan. Uh, personally, I didn't express much disappointment at the meeting the other day, but I'm a little disappointed in the role that the Army Corps has been playing here. Uh, it seems to me they've been kind of slow in getting information to us and making these types of uh, circumstances known to us. Uh, this, I believe, and uh, Ms. Halliday can correct me if I'm wrong, this is. Uh, work that has already been completed, is that correct? Correct, yes. Okay, and just to answer the finance question, uh, where did this $4,000 and some not come from? Uh, we paid this out of the line item um, for the levy. Um, I believe to cover the cost, it will end up having to come out of the bond as well. Um, but we had to take it because it was, uh, the work had already been completed, we did have to pay that. Um, it, uh, yeah, that was over a month ago now. Again, another one of those circumstances where we're sort of locked into a circumstance that's difficult to get ourselves out of. Uh, but these sort of continuous incremental requests for more and more funding is really sort of becoming, I would say, aggravating for lack of a more accurate term. Uh, but again, being that we are locked into uh, uh, being required to uh, uh, comply with this, uh, we have to keep in mind that each time these things pop up that we're talking about protection of a great area of land great many assets that uh, are more than just simply relevant to this immediate area. Uh, unfortunately, this is another one of those, again, as we know, uh, Mr. Keller would probably tell us very quickly that uh, government moves in rather slow incremental steps, and we've been experiencing that for nearly two and a half years here now. So it's not too unfamiliar to us, but uh, uh, with a little bit of grudge, I think we passed this with a positive recommendation to Um, questions council members Dr. Williamson yeah, a couple of questions um, one it, it, to build off some of the comments from earlier it, it, it is and has been frustrating not working with wood but working with the Army Corps of Engineers it seems like it seems like they don't have a plan they don't have their act together they don't have a clear set of goals um, and, or, nor a timeline that they expected us to meet those goals. And so we're dealing with a moving target on um, an ongoing basis. And, and so that ineptitude um, has cost the taxpayers of the city of Williamsport over and over again. We have no idea how much it, at the beginning we had no idea, and still I don't think we have an idea of how much it will cost to come up with the plan 
that will lead to recertification on a, a, on a routine uh, uh, process. It's cost us over a million dollars at this point. And while a chunk of that is clearly needed um, and necessary to protect the citizens of Williamsport from a levee breach and flooding and damage of, of what, I forget the number that's been bandied around, a billion dollars worth of property, a large part of that uh, uh, expenditure has been unnecessary as far as I can tell because uh, the Corps of Engineers has had a moving target and no one seems to be uh, taking responsibility for giving the city or its uh, hired representatives a clear picture on what the future would hold. Now, they're the federal government. They can do whatever they want, apparently, um, and we can't hold them to task. But um, I am inclined to invite as high up of people within the Army Corps of Engineers to attend a city council meeting and to ask them directly, rather than putting our staff and our uh, paid consultants engineering firms through this grilling over and over as we trickle large chunks of money out to meet a moving target by the Army Corps of Engineers. And so um, I guess one thing I would say to both of you, thank you for answering all of these very difficult questions. I know that the difficult situation is not of your creation. Um, but uh, secondarily, um, I think um, however it happens, um, I would like the people in charge of the people that we've been talking to to be invited to a future city council meeting where we can grill them directly um, and to express the displeasure of the taxpayers of the city of Williamsport, and by the way, the taxpayers of the federal government um, for costs unnecessarily. And I'm not talking about the necessary part. Clearly, we need a levy system that will survive any disaster. Um, but I'm talking about the unnecessary part that at this point probably caught is in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. I think that would be a wonderful idea, and if I were to draft a letter, would you all be willing to sign that? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I, I, I really think that would be great. Absolutely. Um, please do draft a letter and, and send it our way, and uh, and uh, we'll see what we can do about getting out in the, in the coming week. So thank that you. Great. It's, um, whether or not that will make any difference whatsoever, let's put them on TV. That is the next push, and um, they, they want to talk to the elected officials, so yes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, second question I had real quick before we move on is, is to make sure um, it, it seems like the financing question of the last item and this item are, are a bit up in the air. We need a firm plan um, for how do we get through the rest of this fiscal year on hopefully this being uh, the, the remainder of the expenses, but how much of that is going to be coming out of the general fund in, in whatever line item, including through transfers, and how much of it will have to be putting us in debt. Remember, when we say bond, we're talking about going into debt. We've already committed to that debt, but uh, it means we will have less of that available, if I've counted right, 70-something um, thousand dollars less available, not just for the match. And that, that, part, that discussion alone was important, but also for the actual work that needs to be done to make sure that the citizens are paid uh, are, are, are kept safe. Engineering work is necessary and sometimes it's hard to realize how much engineering work uh, is needed um, uh, to make sure things are done the right way. This item, for example, while I know that Wood does a great job and it was necessary given the circumstances, the circumstances themselves were not necessary. And so, um, you know, that ties back to my prior point, but I, I, I want to make sure that we have a plan that where there'll be some money left um, out of that $500,000 so that we actually not just have a match that can count, but actually have dollars left mm -hmm. that are local dollars that go into physical improvements, construction, not engineering, not meetings, not uh, adjusting when uh, the the uh, Corps of Engineers, the federal government, moves the target again. So, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Novio. Just a very quick follow-up. I do know that, uh, and, and I'm not sure, maybe either of you can tell us whether the, the follow-up to, uh, or following up on this with this $4,750 is due in part to the pump failure start that we had recently? 
Well, that was one of the items that was listed in the draft 2017 inspection report. And um, in addition to some failing retaining walls around the pump stations and some other maintenance issues that were identified that were not present in the 2010 final report. And when we received that draft report, it was right before the city was submitting or submitting a memo um, when you went to DC. So we included a line item for additional maintenance and we tried to incorporate some of those higher ticket price items, including a, a no start condition on a pump. We made a ballpark estimate mm -hmm. and we went high on what we thought either replacing or rebuilding your pump would be within like the 12 hour turnaround period. We had to review that information and be able to give you a value so that the city could represent its, um, its responsibilities per that draft inspection report. Thank you. Ms. Mueller. Um, I just wanted to make the suggestion. I, I very rarely, when I'm on city council, find myself um, being the conciliatory person. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but when you do pen that letter, Ms. Halliday, I would suggest that it perhaps not be quite as strongly worded as Dr. Williamson's statement was. Since these are, after all, the people who we will eventually be asking for the money to, that we'll need to match. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so I think both things are very important. I think, it's imp I think it's important that the Corps is aware that, as the groundbreakers, we have spent a bundle of money on things that we didn't need to spend them on. And consequently, also as the groundbreakers, we are owed perhaps some level of commitment from the Army Corps that other um, municipalities may not wind up deserving. Um, I, I, perhaps that's the way to phrase it. But uh, I, I think being angry is, is well worth our while, and, and I too am angry. Um, but we <laughs> um, also need to couch that if we're ever going to get any funding. So <laughs> thank you. I, I just had one question on the... Uh the letter from May 8th, uh, 2018 to, uh, to Ms. Halliday that's, that we got with this. Um, in addition to the new, the third paragraph down says, in addition to the new data provided by the Army Corps, some pu pump station design files were located and provided after the technical memo, memo was drafted for backup power requiring an additional technical review for required modifications and whatever that means. What was that all about? Well, since if you recall, we were on an exceptionally tight time frame to mm -hmm. submit that memo. So the city was locating documents, 50, 60, 70 year old documents and getting them to us as they were locating okay. them. So they were scanning them and then emailing them and we were reviewing them pretty much in real time. Mm -hmm. There were a couple pump stations that were difficult to find the drawings for. In preparing our technical memo so that we could meet the deadline, we made some assumptions based mm -hmm. on their size, based on the pump specs right. without having the full design drawings. After we received the design drawings, we had to go back and at least review to make sure our mm -hmm. assumptions were correct and that they best represented the design drawings that we had then received. So mm -hmm. it was an effort that we had attempted to, um, to capture everything with mm -hmm. assumptions at first, but then we had better data, so it was, it was best to vet oh, that. To go with me. Yes. Is it, um, I, I assume we're gonna need all that stuff at some point, so we should probably get it together. <laughs> right. Then. Well, we have, um, we produced a large spreadsheet with a tab for every pump station mm -hmm. with all of the mechanical specs, pump specs, motor specs, electrical specs, and that's what we had used for our costing exercise. And mm -hmm. we can absolutely give that to the city, and we recommend that that would be used in future feasibility studies or right. future analyses because it's a compiled data set of many decades of information. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. If there are no other questions, um, Mrs. Frank, please. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Noviello. Yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Slaughter. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Dr. Williams. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Frank. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Ms. Holliday. Um, okay, we're up to, back up to item seven. Mr. Nichols. Resolution Great. authorizing the City of Williamsport to award a contract for the purchase of five support vehicles. Okay. Motion. 
Oh, a motion to so moved. Second. Thank you. Mr. Nichols, please. Thank you. <laughs> I do fade into the woodwork, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. No, I was fading away okay. somewhere else. <laughs> but anyway, good evening. And this resolution is to approve uh, the purchase of five support vehicles as approved and funded by PennDOT. And a lot of information is included in your packet related to that. Three of the vehicles that replace support vehicles assigned to operations, was, which have exceeded their useful life by many, many years. And the other two will be put into service as part of our expanded paratransit service operating in, a, in our five county area now. Um, these vehicles will be utilized for RBT's ADA paratransit service and will provide shared ride services as well, such as medical assistance trips and out of service trips, such as uh, van trips to Geisinger. Um, you know, assessing our, our support vehicle inventory, unfortunately, all of our support vehicles, except for one, which is a CNG truck that was recently brought to council, they're all eligible for replacement uh, over the next several years. So we'll have to continue to address uh, the need to replace these vehicles as part of our annual capital budget. In fact, 10 out of the 15 vehicles have over 100,000 miles, but uh, I think many, many of the vehicles will be able to sustain many more miles. So. Also, I'm looking into the current disposition rules for these vehicles, so I think it was brought up at the Finance Committee if there's any opportunity to give these vehicles to other departments, so I'm looking into the, just to make sure which funding source we utilize for those particular vehicles to see if we can uh, move them around in other city departments. I have a good feeling that we can uh, because the, the, the value is not that much as long as there's a threshold in terms of value. So if it's under a certain value, which we can look up in Kelly Blue Book or whatever, I think we'll be able to do that. So I will probably have that figured out by next week sometime. So it was reviewed by Finance Committee, and I'm glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Ms. Mealy? Um, yes, Finance did review this and forwarded it to the full body of counsel with a positive recommendation. Um, but also, as Mr. Nichols noted, with the note that uh, while it might seem as though a 12-year-old um, a vehicle is, is old over at RVT, um, there are plenty of places in the city where 12 year olds practically brand new. <laughs> and, um, and so uh, I think, I think uh, what Mr. Kilpatrick actually said was that there were, that five years or 100,000 miles was the threshold for replacing them for in, in transit. Five years 100, 000, or 100,000. Right, but exactly. We have the, a lot of them have over 100,000 now, but I think newer vehicles today can certainly go with good maintenance, last a lot longer than that. Right. Uh, yeah, and Joe Girardi has eye on the Etzel we have, so I think that we'll, uh, we'll, we'll save that for him. <laughs> exactly. As if we, 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 were, we used to laud Mr. Wright for maintaining things for 30 odd years, and here we are replacing vehicles <laughs> in RVT after 10. Um, so, anyway, it, it did seem as though we might be able to, uh, to find a use for some of those vehicles somewhere else in the city. Um, that said, uh, the, the match, I believe, is uh, three and two thirds percent. Was that Mr. Um, Yes, so it's 3.26%, uh, I think, is local, yeah. local share, which is um, very, you know, conducive for um, us to provide the local share with little difficulty. Can we just turn the entire city into a transit operation? Hmm? Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. I thought that was the plan. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I thought we already had. <laughs> um, anyway, finance board to the full body of council with a positive recommendation. Thank you. Comments or questions? I'm, I'm grateful to see or to hear that we might be able to put these to use somewhere else within the city limits. Uh, the only question I really had was, was are all the vehicles that we, that the city or in or RBT owns, are they all under municipal plates? Uh, all but one, I think. And why would one not be under municipal plates? Um, I guess I thought back then when it was, it's a night, it's a relatively old vehicle. Um, I'm not really sure why. It was just uh, when we got the new plates, we go to the particular. We used to go to Rikers, and then uh, I don't know for some reason uh, whoever did it just uh, secured a regular plate for some reason. But but no, all of the uh, vehicles had municipal plates except for that one. Um, so if, when that one comes up for re-registration, will, will we get municipal plates at that time? Or 
the state. That it? probably makes sense. You know, be, I, there's no reason not to have a municipal plate at this point in time. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Hearing none, Mrs. Frank. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Nobiello. Yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Slaughter. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Dr. Williamson. Yes. Uh, and the uh, resolution carries. Um, next item on the agenda, if I'm correct, mm -hmm. then is number eight, resolution for a multimodal grant. This is Frank. Resolution requesting a multimodal transportation fund grant from the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. Thank you. Can I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Hear a motion and a second. Mr. Nichols. Uh, thank you again. This resolution is needed for a grant application requesting a multimodal transportation fund grant from the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, the amount of $1,193,306. And this grant request was originally submitted by Lycoming College last year. And, uh, and unfortunately, in the last funding cycle, it was not one of the grant requests approved. So our project team decided that this time around that, uh, that the city and RVT should submit the grant application. So we had to update the resolution that's on file with PennDOT to reflect the needed changes for the application document. Um, I did hand out, um, I think you've seen this uh, matrix before, it's an uh, updated Connect Williamsport Old City Revitalization document pertaining to the source and use of grant funding mm -hmm. and the status of our requests. Uh, you will notice that this request is for the realignment of Franklin Street and the reconstruction of Basin Street with matching funds being provided by the foundation. Um, so obviously this is a critical uh, grant request um, that we, you know, hopefully will be approved uh, in the near future. I should say on a very positive note, uh, we just received notice that our TAP grant was approved uh, and that's uh, uh, a grant application that goes to the Watts process, uh, according and technical committee process, which has to endorse it and goes to PennDOT. And uh, um, we received notice earlier this week that that was approved for a million dollars. And you'll see in the column, I don't know which one, I forget which one it is. It's uh, transportation set aside, I think it's listed, and it's for the Willow Street part of the project, which is uh, gonna be a pedestrian greenway pathway. You know, there's still traffic will be there, but. It'll be um, designed such a way to help meet the MS4 and, and, and uh, you know, just to be a greenway, so to speak, uh, and connectivity for the college to the, to the middle of the downtown. Um, also, the county commissioners, uh, we approached the county commissioners about participating uh, more uh, into the project. They did fund a little bit of the traffic study, um, the TIS study uh, that's required uh, by PennDOT. Uh, they did contribute some towards the uh, Thomas Point Associates study um, as well. But at this point in time, uh, with major commitments by RVT of over $500,000, the city over $500,000, the foundation a million dollars, we felt um, that we were prepared to ask the county to participate as well. Um, you know, and as we've done before with other projects, and so you'll see um, where the county is. And um, this was very, very important because the state pointed out they're looking for, you know, you know all municipalities or, or government entities to be part of the process. And um, they're looking for that, you know, as part of their review and approval of our multimodal grant. But the county did step up to the plate and they, and they allocate over $500,000 in matching funds uh, today's meeting. Um, and uh, you know, we were um, obviously very pleased and I wanna thank them uh, tremendously you know, for their, um, you know, their, their effort uh, and their participation and support of, of you know, what is really a very commu important community not only economic development project, but, but a uh, um, project that's revitalization is involved and, and you know, and a lot of multimodal type improvements and uh, I, it's just a great project that everybody I, I think will be proud of. So, <clears throat> you know, I did thank them. I didn't get to the first part of the meeting and I think, uh, I think Rebecca, you were there, there and Chelsea was there and uh, college officials were there. So. 
again, we did, if you have any opportunity to uh, extend thanks to the commissioners for this, it would be much appreciated. So um, I think that's about it. I'm glad to answer any questions about the resolution. Thank you. Um, uh, Ms. Mealy from Finance. Uh, yes, finance did review this and forward it to the full body of council with a positive recommendation. Um, uh, as Mr. Nichols observed, it's, it's merely a change in who's submitting the grant because uh, conversations, I believe, with Delta Development had led to the conclusion that we might be more successful with the grant submission if it came from um, a municipal entity rather than a nonprofit um, slash, you know, educational entity. Um, and uh, so we certainly hope that we will be uh, more successful this time. Um, uh, it was, of course, good news. We, we heard at the finance meeting on Tuesday that we did receive more than the $900,000 we'd requested in TAP funding. Um, unfortunately, my understanding was that we won't be able to use that to offset. It, that has to be spent on Willow Street, correct, because of the nature of the TAP application? Uh, yeah, the total million dollars that was approved will have to be for what is considered the Willow Street Greenway mm -hmm. uh, project. And uh, so... Okay. Um, as you see by that matrix, you know, we've identified a lot of funding sources and we're, you know, getting them approved one by one and mm -hmm. it's getting down to where the most important one we uh, need is a multimodal grant. Um, the early grant we got, which was for signals, that's funding that comes from traffic light fines in Philadelphia. Why that was ever done that way, I have no idea. but. <laughs> So if you ever got a ticket in Philadelphia for going through traffic, you're like, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll encourage all my friends in Philadelphia you know, to start running lights. <laughs> it's funny how these funding sources, you know, get get funding, you know, to make grants, but you know, so you just gotta dig around and see what's out there. Um, yeah, but that said, finance forwarded to the full body of council with a positive recommendation. Thank you. Comments or questions? Um, to go back to the matrix, and thank you for putting this together um, and providing it to us. Um, as I see it, um, if I'm reading it correctly, basically, um, council uh, challenged the project team, you know, when all of this started to. Uh, uh, limit the expenditure of public funds to infrastructure improvement. And uh, we see uh, a number of infrastructure improvements uh, listed on here, East 3rd Street, Basin Street, Franklin Street, Willow Streetscape, Pine Street, Riverwalk, Signals, East 4th Street, uh, et cetera. Um, the total cost of those infrastructure improvements, if I'm reading all this correctly, uh, total $7 million. Um, and if I'm also reading it correctly, um, between a committed local match and state funding sources um, that have been actually awarded, um, we have the vast majority of that is in place, especially if we're successful on this particular uh, grant that the resolution is about tonight, with only two more pending outstanding that have already been applied for the green light go and the transportation set aside that's uh, that that was the one that just i mean the town i'm sorry right yeah. the green light go right. still to be pending so um <clears throat> excuse me we've got on the state funding sources um with the local matches essentially um quick math uh five million of the seven million or so uh, already funded. If this one's successful, it'll be over six million of the seven million, and then hopefully the last bit and keep, uh, in the green light go. And keep in mind also the college received a two million dollar Rackby grant, and if you add their investment in the Gateway project, their Gateway project, uh, which is a key part of the base in Franklin Street sure. area, uh, you're talking about and what's been reported is a twenty million dollar investment in our community. Right, so, and a twenty million dollar um, investment that we won't. The multiplier effect we will see in coming years, right? It, in the end, it may be a 40 or 60 or 80 million dollar investment because the idea um, that we, going back to, I don't remember how many years, three or four years ago, was that if we could all come together as partners through the, um, the East Third Street Gateway Commission, um, come up with a, a plan, a, a game plan that we could all work from, um, then the college 
would make its investment, the city with its partners would make the infrastructure investment, and then that would hopefully then spark other private investment in, in that uh, part of our community. Um, and so I'm, uh, that 20 or 30 or you know, maybe more in the future um, is, is really important. Um, tonight we're really talking about one piece of a $7 million public infrastructure plan of which even though, and, and, and the reason I'm bringing this up is, you know, people ask all of us about, you know, what, is anything ever going to happen? Um, and the answer is yes, we'll see dirt turning here in this year. Mm -hmm. um, but the key is getting the funding in place, and it's not a wish list or a pipe dream at, at this point. We have the vast majority of the funding in place with a plan to get the remainder of the funding in place theoretically by the end of the year. Correct. Right. Yeah. Hopefully um, earlier than that. But. And one then question: You talked about the um, the county's commitment made today mm -hmm. to help with that match of, of uh, half a million dollars, right, yeah. towards this over seven million dollar um, uh, public infrastructure mm -hmm. investment. Um, but that's not even reflected on here. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Uh, I think no. Not, because it happened no, 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 today. No, it is not. And that is not totally reflected on there because that matrix is only for hard costs. Okay. And so there are substantial costs for the, the soft costs as well. Sure. So unfunded costs, the design engineering type costs, construction management costs. And so, you know, which usually runs another 20% or something. Yeah, it's well, 12% of 12%. Okay. Yeah. So, um, it, so their, their dollars will also leverage, you know, grants for the soft costs as well. So those okay. are just... And, and so part. one of my specific question is you have one column under local match uh, labeled unidentified local match. Mm -hmm. um, will that five, and it's only 200 and only, I, I don't mean to make, be flipping about only $275,000, but it's not half a million dollars. Does the half a million dollars help contribute towards that unidentified local match? Yes. Okay. As well as unfunded soft costs, uh, okay. which, which are part of matching. The so match. it, so it, in the end, the local match is now fully covered on both soft cost and hard cost. Yes. Okay. And, the, and that's is, great to hear. Is, uh, uh, tremendous. You know, and after tonight, um, all of the external funding for the public infrastructure component of the overall project is now applied for grant, mm -hmm. grant applications, yeah. assuming this passes, of course. Um, so it's good news, and, and I think uh, people will be excited to see dirt turning in the coming months, and then when dirt's turning and, and construction is, is really starting to happen, then hopefully the private entities will have the assurances that they years ago have indicated that they needed to then be able again to put their plans into motion in terms of investment. Um, and so we can see, a, a, a look forward to seeing a, a transformed uh, part of our community. And yeah. so thank well, you. Well, if for you look back over the last 20 or 30 years, every time we, uh, you know, committed to a major infrastructure project and worked to get grants, uh, there was a lot of unknowns and a lot of concern and a lot of, you know, worry about, you know, is this going to pay dividends for the city? And each time it has. And and just to think, all this started when uh, a few members of council dragged mm -hmm. a whole bunch of people to go stand in the rain under the awning of the old bus station and go, hey, why don't we do a traffic study here? And they said, no, 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 let's put together a, a comprehensive plan, and, and here we are. So thank you for uh, helping us get there. Uh, other comments or questions? Hearing none, Mrs. Frey. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Noviello. Yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Slaughter. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Dr. Williamson. Yes, and the resolution carries. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is uh, demolition. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, uh, for 343 West 4th Street. Mr. Jory. Yes, good evening, President Williamson, members of council. Uh, what you have before you is a request for a demolition for the property located at 343 West 4th Street, located in Central Business District. Uh, the structure presently is vacant and is cost prohibitive to renovate. Uh, once the structure is torn down, grass will be planted within 30 days of the demolition. 
And I have a representative here, and uh, any questions you'd like to ask of me, more than happy to answer them. Uh, thank you. Can I have a motion and a second to, uh, to approve this application for demolition? So moved. Second. Hear your motion and a second. Comments or questions? Um, uh, just a request, I suppose. I actually um, was fortunate enough to be able to catch a little bit of uh, Mr. Herman Logue's time earlier this week to discuss with him the proposed demolition and, um, and just sort of to discuss his plans for the site. Um, and he, he was very kind and very open with me about, about his plans for the site, um, which seemed to be um, in the long run parking. That is to say there won't, there won't be any structure on the, on the site in, in the long run. Um, as, as I told him then, um, I, you know, it, it's a, some concern to me only because um, that is the entrance to our historic district. That is uh, an exceptionally, the, the historic district is an exceptionally important city asset. And, um, and I think that, uh, that it, you know, I would feel much differently about a, a demolition of a structure like this if it, if it lay anywhere else and if it weren't going to expose if it were a parking lot. Um, frankly, the, the back of a building and a bunch of HVAC units that don't, uh, that, that aren't going to be particularly scenic for um, Williamsport travelers. Uh, Dr. Williamson, I think you missed it, but um, Mr. Huffman actually made a, a kind of a moving presentation about the building um, just when we opened the meeting, uh, including the line, I, I believe that they, that it had been called by the YMCA Association when it was um, constructed, the best plan, most substantially built building in the YMCA fleet. Um, and uh, and I, I would say, having been through the building relatively recently um, with uh, another developer just last year by chance, um, that the building is very substantially built. <laughs> um, but, uh, but I do understand um, that uh, during the demolition process, all the utilities to the building were severed. Um, despite the good faith assurances of the, um, of the developer who had said he would maintain the structure. Um, not Mr. Logue, but Mr. Klingerman. Um, all of these things said, in my conversations with, with Mr. Logue, um, you know, he, he said, and, and I completely understand this, that the building is uh, more work than he is interested in taking on um, currently. It, it, it would cost more to renovate. It is simply cost, um, uh, cost prohibitive, and I absolutely understand that. It, it is a huge undertaking. Um, however, I have been in conversation with a handful of different entities in the city, everything from Preservation Williamsport, which has a bit of an interest because the building is a supporting structure on the National Historic Register for our historic district, um, and, uh, and also um, with, I, I had previously been in conversations with the State Historic Preservation Office, um, I, and um, I would like to ask council um, for a few weeks to flesh out some of these conversations. Um, frankly, I, uh, I had initiated um, some investigations into the building vis-a-vis um, -vis saving it a couple of years ago and had understood that the developer at the time, um, Mr. Klingerman, was moving toward a, uh, a process that would preserve this, the structure. And, um, and so I, I sort of dropped the, um, the work that I was doing and was surprised a few weeks ago when uh, Mr. Girardi mentioned that uh, he had an applicant, he was about to have an application for the demolition again on his desk. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to, um, to look into it consequently and sort of renew my investigations. Um, but I know in, in casual conversation with the, with the new owner, um, Mr. Logue, the other day, he did say uh, that if I could find somebody who wanted to develop the building, that he would give it to him. <laughs> and, and I said, well, that's lovely. <laughs> um, I doubt it. <laughs> but, um, but if we, uh, I, I, having, having now heard a, a handful of things from Preservation Williamsport and heard from a couple other people, um, I would ask uh, that um, I, I know that it is a matter of um, some, has, has been on council's sort of to-do list for quite a while for Mr. Girardi to uh, take care of what has become a, a serious, what has been, let's be honest, for the past three years, a serious eyesore on the corner of 4th and Elmira. Um, but uh, it would seem to me that a few more weeks, if we were to table this demolition this evening, would not um, hurt the, uh, uh, would not make a huge difference given that we've been waiting three years to bring that building down or to revamp the building and, and build a nice area beside it. Um, I would ask if um, council would consider tabling this uh, motion, this item until the next agenda.
That is a motion. I would make a motion that council can that council table this uh, item until the next agenda. And I would apologize to the representation um, for having you sit through the whole meeting. <laughs> uh, there's a motion to uh, table. Is there a second? Second. I hear a motion and a second. Comments or questions on the motion to table? Mr. Novio. Uh, I understand that obviously council's own legislation suggests that we don't have a role to play in denying a demolition. But uh, I would always be in favor of uh, you know, a couple weeks uh, of uh, opportunity to reflect on some information and such and, and to uh, you know, talk it through a bit more than we've seen up to this point. Uh, it, it, from, in my estimation, for what it's worth over the last year or so, information regarding this facility has been very, very slow in coming. And even if we look at the information we have in front of us today, uh, you know, two or three word phrases for the purposes of demol demolishing the building doesn't seem quite adequate to me. I'm not an engineer, I'm not a developer, so I, I would like a bit more information about, you know, the, the status of the building itself and, and uh, uh, some reflection on, on, the, on the lack of feasibility of taking this building. I can, to a better I can answer condition. some of that. Thank you. Like. Um, and one of the things I would point out just a second before you do, um, because of course we have the demolition ordinance and we've got a history with the demolition ordinance and, and its uh, limitations as it exists. Um, but in, in this case, we also have a, a second guiding document in terms of contractual relationship between the city of Williamsport and, and uh, Klingerman's organization um, that indicated that there would be, I forget the exact word, in good faith and effort um, uh, to uh, maintain the use of the building, and and uh, and and so I think it's worthwhile to then explore what that language actually means, and to the degree that the uh, change in ownership, uh, that language is is still. Uh, you know, what is the process by which they have demonstrated? more than a few words mm -hmm. um, that that has occurred, even across ownerships. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jardy. Uh Yeah, just to answer some of Mr. Noviel's question, I actually did go through the property with Mr. Logan, Mr. Klingerman, the mayor and myself here just before this came through to look at the facility. And it's a 50,000 square foot building, average cost to renovate a building like that's $100 a square foot. So about $5 million to renovate the building. And I realized that this did go through the chamber. The chamber did put out an RFP for people to take bids on it. And really, no one wanted to buy the building even for a dollar. My concern is, and again, I think it's a good idea if you wish to research it. But when we look for a developer, I would really appreciate we look for a developer who will develop the property and not mm -hmm. let it sit for 20 years. Because I could buy it for a dollar, but I don't have $5 million to fix it. Right. So that's my only concern. But so I just wanted to throw that out there. And, and I agree with you 100%, Mr. Jardy. Right. In fact, that has been in the last 24 hours while I've been considering the possible wrinkle of looking for a developer. That has been one of my chief concerns, that somebody who would have the wherewithal to, to engage in something right. like that. And um, the secondary question, of course, as it always is, is what, um, in, the, in the same way that we brought something to the table in the Liberty Arena situation, what, can be, what could be brought to the table in this situation, um, either um, through state and federal tax credits, um, or in any other mechanism to, to incentivize um, development of this structure. And, uh, and um, that's part of what I'd like two weeks to flesh out. And the, and the reason why at this point, we did give him the letter on the 30th. Um, I felt it was not proper for me to make him seat it and grade it. If he did decide to demo it, he's gonna have to bring all the equipment on the area he just seated and demoed. And to backfill it and do the wall again, if he's going to demo it, it I don't see him putting the money into the building. That's the reason why those things were not completed on time. His intent was until they decide to tear it down. So the reason why it's not fixed at this point is because I allowed them to hang on until we get this solved at this point. Thank you. Mr. Noviello, I'm sorry, were you finished? I'm good, thank you. Okay, thank you. Other comments or questions on the motion to table? Ms. Mina. Actually, I, I will excuse me, this does not pertain to the motion to table, but um, Mr. Girardi, I was, um, could you flesh out for me a little bit? It does not need to me this evening, but perhaps over the next few days, um, I had heard that we were going to engage in an RFP process, but I heard absolutely nothing further after that and assumed, in fact, that it was still ongoing. If you would be able maybe to, to seek some information about that and, sure. and let me know yep. exactly what happened, who, how it was publicized, who, who may or may not have been contacted, I would very much appreciate it. It would obviously help me if we were going to, yeah, to seek a development. Right. Okay. Write it down or I will forget. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Other comments or questions? 
Uh, Ms. Frank on the motion of the table. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Noviello. Yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Slaughter. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Dr. Williams. Yes, and the, the application to demolish is table. Uh, next item on the agenda is except for filing, we have the public works meeting minutes of March 13th, uh, public safety meeting minutes of March 13th, 2018, ERC meeting minutes of February 20th, 2018, and the fin finance committee meeting minutes of January 3rd and January 30th, 2018. Can I have a motion and a second to uh, accept those for file? So moved. Hearing a motion and a second. Comments or questions? Hearing none, Mrs. Frank? Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Novello. Yes. Mr. Henderson. Yes. Mr. Slaughter. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Dr. Williamson. Uh, yes, uh, and those are accepted to be filed. Um, next item on the agenda is announcements. We'll be holding an executive session uh, immediately following uh, this meeting for the purposes of uh, negotiation. Um, announcement, uh, other announcements include the next regularly scheduled city council meeting will be held on Thursday, May 24th at 7.30 here in council chambers. Other upcoming meetings include Monday, May 14th at noon, uh, the planning commission meeting at 4 p.m. the Recreation Commission. On Tuesday, May 15th at 10 a.m. is the Blighted Property Review Board. 3.30 p.m. is the ERC Committee meeting. Um, and at 6.30 p.m. is HARB. On Wednesday, May 16th at 4 p.m. is the Charter Commission meeting. On Thursday, May 17th at 10.30 a.m. is the Zoning Hearing Board. 4 p.m. is the Board of Health. There's also a, a blood drive at 1 p.m. that day uh, in the Seckler Room. On Monday, May 21st, at 1.30 p.m. is the Fire Pension Board. At 5.30 p.m. is the Government Study Home Rule uh, meeting. Um, I'm, given how it's listed, Mrs. Frank, I assume that they now are meeting in City Hall? They moved their meetings from Saturdays to Monday and Wednesday. Oh, I'm sorry, every, mo the first Monday and the, and the third Monday. Okay, and here in City Hall? Yes, here okay. in City Hall. That's, uh, I think that'll make it more uh, their meetings more accessible to the public. Um, on Tuesday, May 22nd at 1 p.m. is the Finance Committee meeting. At 2.30 p.m. is Public Works and at 3.30 p.m. is Public Safety. On Wednesday, May 23rd at 11.30 a.m. is the Redevelopment Authority. That brings us to the end of our agenda. Are there any uh, uh, comments by members of council? Seeing none, Mayor, you or your administration? Mr. Jury. Uh, yeah, real quick, um, two things. One is it is grass season, and our officers are out and about throughout the city making sure grass is being cut. So I just wanted to get that out to the general public. Um, the other thing is with um, the ongoing paving projects, um, I appreciate it. Maybe council might want to get out and take a look at all the roads that are being paved um, down in the Lincoln Avenue area, Penn Street areas. And I know public work has put a lot of effort into it, the administration, Adam, UGI, and the Water Authority, and Rebecca. So just to get out there and take a look at what the end product was, it worked out very nice. And, and on that particular point, uh, thank you for bringing it up. Uh, everybody needs to have a little bit of patience on get, figuring out how to get around town at the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. We can see a lot of work getting done and it'll be over soon enough and we'll have a little bit smoother roads uh, to look forward to. So thank you. Um, anything else from the administration? Thank you. Uh, any comments from the general public? Please uh, come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, if you would, and, and uh, you have uh, the standard three minutes. Thank you, Dr. Williamson. My name is Bruce Huffman, 1000 Cherry Street, Williamsport. Uh, I just want to bring uh, uh, your attention to a couple of historical related programs that are coming up since we're in a history mode. Um, and they relate actually to the city. So the first one is on Saturday, May 19th, if I get my glasses here, um, at one o'clock at the Tabor Museum, I will be representing my program on the old Pine Street Burying Ground, which if you're familiar with the old City Hall property, um, that was once a cemetery. And so I lay out the whole chronicle of history of that. And it's interesting because uh, city government was actually quite involved in in that whole process, and I think it would be very interesting to you. Um, the second is on May 28th, which is Memorial Day. There is many, many Memorial Day ceremonies, but there's one up at uh, Wildwood Cemetery at the GAR Circle, the Grand Army of the Republic, which is the Civil War veterans. And um, 
they do a, they do a nice little ceremony there. They fire the cannon. They do a Union Army kind of um, observance. And then this year, because this is the 150th anniversary of a general by the name of John Logan, who was a Union Army general after the war, issuing a proclamation to the various posts in the GAR for them to strew flowers at the graves of the Civil War veterans. So I've arranged with um, several florists in the area to get donations of flowers, and the general public who attends that will then be asked to walk over to the circle and place a flower. So you're all invited to that. Lastly, I want to say that on May 31st, which is a Thursday, three weeks from today, at 7 o'clock, you don't have a council meeting. <laughs> I arranged it specifically for that is I will be doing a presentation um, concerning a historical perspective of Williamsport's different forms of government and the Pennsylvania laws that created them. Um, I started going to the different commission meetings a few, several weeks ago now, and uh, soon after that I did some research and really learned a whole bunch <laughs> about uh, the various laws going back 100 years that really got us to the point where ev we're even in this room with this form of government. Because 100 years ago, it was not possible. And uh, there were a number of Williamsport people who were involved in trying to change the laws at the state level so that uh, third class cities in particular would have more local control. So it's, it's really been a fascinating process, and I think it's so uh, appropriate because of these two study groups going on. Um, so that's going to be open to the public. I'm just trying to get it publicized. Um, so I think, uh, you know, I, again, welcome you to attend that. I, I have a little sheet that has all of these things on it. Oh. And, and, and may I ask that you uh, also send uh, the, to the city clerk so she can get it on our calendars and... There we go. And, uh, and we can publicize it beyond as well. Thank you. Are there other comments from the general public? Seeing none, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.